<laughs> That's a great question. I don't know. After June 11th or the week of June 11th. Um, they haven't even figured out what we're doing next week, so I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, I, your final exam will take place before June 25th. <laughs> it will just be like a normal, it will be like your midterm, but they, I don't know. I don't even want to predict if they'll make you come in or if they want you to do it in class. I have no answers. I'm so sorry. You're going to have a final exam. Yes. Let's see, that's usually like the 18th or the 19th, isn't it? Yes, that would be testing week. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it falls on a Saturday this year, doesn't it? You're welcome to pull out a calendar. I know next year it's in our calendar as a day off, but you guys aren't typically here that day anyway, so we would have it off. But yeah, it's a new, it's a Saturday, that's what I thought. I don't think it's one of those holidays that gets pushed to a different day, you know, like 4th of July kind of thing, like the observed versus the, I'm probably saying that wrong, yeah. but yeah, I'm not sure. When I figure out more information about your final, I will share it with you. But yeah, right now, I think they have their hands full trying to figure out other things. Okay. So we did meet yesterday, but I don't know if we really, I don't know if I really have anything new to share with you just yet, just that there are a lot of things being considered and there are a lot of problems with the things being considered. And there's talk about bringing interaction time back. Um, I will, once I like actually hear a concrete plan, I will share it with you, okay? But again, as of right now, plan on coming to school on Wednesday, April 14th, right? Is that the Wednesday? Okay, that's what I thought. Yes, as of right now, they are still going to go first. Okay, so we need to pick up where we left off. What problem number did I end with? I guess it doesn't matter. Four. Okay. So we're going to get into some level twos. So this just means you got a little bit more to do on these. So you're not going to be in polar initially first here. So I ended at number, we'll say five. Okay. So we're still going to be using the model theorem. But what do I want to say for your actual question here? We are going to be finding. in rectangular form. So we want to find in rectangular form. So that's how you're going to be writing this answer out. So your first question, we are going to go, and I want to go negative three radical three and plus three i raised to the fourth. And again, final answer is going to be in rectangular. So you're going to have to deal with that uh, power again. In order to use the Mob's theorem with the power, you have to convert this into polar form first. So the first thing we need is you need polar form. So you're going to go through all those steps again. So polar form means we need R and Theta. Okay. So to begin, I'm going to do R. And it might be a good idea if you try this with your calculators, just so you make sure you're doing enough parentheses. So I would go the negative three radical three. And then I'm going to go squared. And then plus three squared. So go ahead right now and type that in and make sure you can actually get this answer. Because again, you're gonna need parentheses, especially around that first term. So the negative three and then the radical three plus the three. And if you've done this correctly, you should get six. I'm gonna get six. Okay. So our value is equal to six. The next thing you need to be in polar form is you need your theta value. So I'm going to kind of graph this, see where we're at. So 
So I have a negative and positive y value. So that means I'm located right here. So quadrant two. Now you're going to do your inverse tan function. So I'm going to do tan inverse. And if you give this one second, this does simplify first. So you would go three over three radical three. And again, if you don't want to type it like that, you could cancel the threes, you know, and just do one over radical three. That just makes it a little bit easier. And you're gonna get a really nice reference angle on this one. So it's not gonna involve any rounding whatsoever. So what did we get for second tan of one over radical three? 30, good. So 30 degrees. All right, so before we write this in polar form and move forward with it, you need to remember that you're in quadrant two. So we're gonna go 180 minus 30 which is equivalent to 150. Okay. So now I can translate this into polar and then I can use the mob's theorem and work with that power that's on the outside the four. So next, we're gonna write this in polar form. So polar form would be six and then cos plus I sine if you wanna abbreviate it. You don't have to abbreviate if you don't want to. And then 150. And then we are going to raise this up to the fourth. Because again, right now, all you did was convert it. Okay, now that you're in polar, again, you can use your theorem. So I'm gonna make you a little note here. You are in polar. So now you are permitted to use your theorem. Okay, so to use the theorem, you're gonna do six raised up to the fourth power. And you're gonna do cos plus I sine. And again, I'm just using the abbreviation just for simplicity. And then this would be 150 times four. Okay, six to the fourth power, someone have that? Six to the fourth power. Yes, thank you. So this is large, 1,296. And then I have cos plus I sine of 600, which is too big. So go ahead and subtract 360 off that. So you're really gonna work with 240. So I have one, two, nine, six, cos plus I sine of 240. All right, almost done. So that's your answer in polar, but unfortunately you have to go to rectangular. So rectangular is off your formula sheet and you are going to do X equals R cos theta. And you're gonna come over and do Y is equal to R sine theta. All right, so I have 1296 times the cosine of 240. And then my other side is going to be 1296 times the sine of 240. Okay, you got more work to do. So again, it's just kind of putting everything together, essentially. So 240 degrees, I'm going to draw another picture here where I've got some space. And 240 degrees terminates in what quadrant? Quadrant three, yep. So you're gonna go 240 minus 180. And that is equivalent to 60. And then you're gonna label your ASTC once more. Again, there's so many different parts to these. And then that will be our final answer once we plug these in. I'll stop right there. So now I know that both of these are negative in that quadrant. So I'm going to do 1296 times the negative cosine of 60, because it's negative there, and 1296 
times the negative sine of 60. And then these are the angles you are supposed to know. All right, what's close to 60? One half, good. And the more you see them, I think the easier they are to remember. So 1296 times negative one half is, um, is it 648? Yes. So this one is negative 648 over here. So I'm going to do 1296. And the sine of 60 is radical 3 over 2. So divide by 2, making this answer minus 648 square root of 3, and then i. And then done. So after all that, you are finally done in this is your answer in rectangular form. Okay, so you just had to do that initial conversion to polar, which made it a little bit tougher and done. How's that one, okay? Basically still same steps, you know, you just have a lengthier process to kind of get yourselves through. Just remember anytime you use your theorem, you're gonna need this written out in polar form first. So polar is really important to make sure you have that. Um, before you go working with those roots, the roots or the flowers. All right, so the next type. So your next categories, we're gonna find what are called the nth roots of complex. So make another category, but still in your 9.8 section. And these type of problems pertain to nth roots. Uh, complex numbers. And these can get a little bit lengthy. I think the biggest one I saw in Delta was a fourth root, and that would just mean you have to do it four times. Okay, so here's how your question is going to be worded. We are going to say, so I'm going to make new categories, so I'll call this one number one. Your question is going to say to find, I'm going to start with a square root first. So find all the square roots. This is literally how the question gets written. So keeping your language the same for you. So find all the square roots of, and we're going to go negative 25i. And I need to tell you how to leave this answer. So this answer we are going to write in rectangular. I'm going to say write answer in rectangular. So when you're done, you're going to have the x plus y i. Okay. Now the deal with the square root is that we're gonna have to do this twice. If you see cube root, you do it three times. If you do fourth root, you see it four times. And again, I don't think you're gonna see anything larger than that. Um, it's very procedure-based. Once you kind of get these started, you just have to kind of go with it. So the first thing I need to do, just like the other question, is I need to take this rectangular and convert it into polar form. So nice, good, thorough note. So step one is convert to polar because you can't use your theorems unless you are in polar form. So you're gonna convert to polar. So currently you have negative 25i, which means I didn't have an x associated with it. So if this, this helps, try it. So this is really like zero minus 25i. Because then it looks like what we've been working with before. So now you have both parts. So now I'm going to go right in and plot this. So if I want polar, that means I want R and I want theta. So R is your square root formula. So I'm going to plot this and then kind of utilize that to find your theta and your R. Okay, so X value is nothing, but we went down 25. So essentially it's like you're right here. 
I'm a unit circle. What is this angle right here? Yep, 270, good. So that is going to be the first theta value that you use. And then all you do is use the fact that you've got coterminal angles to build with. So that's gonna be our theta in a second. And we need to find our R value. So R is equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared still, so same formulas. And I'm gonna do R is equal to square root of zero squared plus negative 25 squared. And again, you probably already know what this is gonna come out to be, but I'm just trying to give you some steps here. So this is just equal to 25. So R is equal to 25. Now your theta, so we established that theta is equal to 270, but what we have to account for is we're doing square roots, so you got to do it twice. So the second square root, all you do is take your 270 and add 360 to it. So the second angle that we're going to use here, so theta is also equal to 630. I'm going to say also use. Okay. So now I'm going further. So now I'm going to write this in polar form. So next step, you're going to write this in polar. So my radius here is 25. And I'm going to do the abbreviation. So cos plus I sine and I'm gonna do my first angle, which is 270. And what you were asked to do is you wanted to find all the square roots. So I'm going to do the square root of that. Okay, so you're in polar. Moving forward, now what you can do is use your theorem. So you're gonna use your theorem to convert this. The first thing I had you do was convert your radical into a fractional exponent. So this becomes parentheses instead, and we go 25, and then cos plus I sine of 270, and you guys remember the square root is the same thing as what power? One half, good. Just like that. Okay, so you always take it, do your conversion. So I'm using the Mob's theorem now because I've got that polar form and I'm gonna take the 25 and raise it to the one half. So I've got 25 raised to the one half, and I've got cos plus I sine of 270 times one half as well. And this is your first square root. So we're gonna use the 630 in a second. So I'll do this. So this one is your first square root. We'll do the second one on the next page because I'm going to run out of space. So this is the work for your first square root and the 630, I didn't forget about it. We're going to use it in a minute. So we keep going on this. So this is a five and then cos plus I sine of half of 270 is 135. Okay, that's your answer in polar. You're not done. You got to go to rectangular. So the last thing you do with this is you take it and you do R cos theta, R sine theta. So I go X is equal to R cos theta. And then I go X is, I'm sorry, Y is equal to R sine theta. And you find these and get your first two and then move on. So this is five times the cosine of 135. And this one is five. And this is times the sine of 135. These are angles that you have to know again. So I'm gonna sketch another picture and we're gonna use second quadrant. So I'm gonna go 180 minus 135. And that is equal to 45, and then I go ASTC, 
and you've established that sine is going to be positive, cos is going to be negative. All right, so here is my first square root answer. So I have five, and then I'm going to plug in here the negative cosine of 45 degrees. And guys, what is the cosine of 45? Good. Yep, negative radical two over two. And there's that side. So that side, if I can move this. Okay, good. So this answer is going to be negative five radical two over two. And then over here, so I have five. And then this is times the sine of 45 positive. So five times radical two over two means I get five radical two over two I, and just so I don't have to write this again, I'm gonna do this, plus. Okay, so there's your first one. So first one, done. There's your first square root. So you would type that first answer. Now we have to do it again. So now I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna grab the 630, but I think I need to switch my screen because I'm gonna run out of space. So the only thing that's gonna change is this right here becomes 630 instead. So 25 and then 630 is what I need to remember. So this is my second square root. And then you're done. So second square root um it was 25 cos plus i sine of 630 and then well i'll do this so it's like that again and then immediately i'm going to take it and rewrite it so i guess just to give you a little bit more practice so I rewrite this as a fractional exponent. So I would get 25 cos plus I sine of 630 raised up to the one half. So I'm in polar. I've got my root over there. So now I can use my theorem. So I'm going to move forward and go 25 raised to the one half, and then cos plus I sine of 630 times a half. And again, this is gonna be the end here. So once you get this answer, you're done. So I have five, and then cos plus I sine of 315, that's polar, so you're not done. Then you're going to take that angle and you're going to go forth and do r cos theta, r sine theta. So x is equal to 5 cos 315. And then y is equal to 5 sine 315. All right, so 315 is what quadrant this time? Yep, four. So AFTC means cosine's positive. So this is going to be the positive cosine of 45 degrees this time. And then my sine value is negative. Negative sine of 45. Plug them in and you're done. So cosine of 45, we already used it. It was, yep, yeah, perfect. And then this one is same deal. And coming down to the end, my second square root answer is gonna be five radical two over two plus, I'm sorry, minus five radical two over two I. And again, all you do is you would type the first one, comma, type the second one. And 
obviously square root, you're going to get two of these. Because when you solve something with x squared, it has two roots to it. x cubed has three roots. x to the fourth has four roots. And again, I don't foresee it going any higher than a fourth root. How's that one, OK? OK, so now let's do a cube root. So we're going to find all of the cube roots next. Because I'm not going to have us go higher than that. So number two, your last one here, is your question is going to say now, find all, and I want to go the cube root I'll find all the cube roots instead. So how many times do you have to do it? Yep. Of 125. So 125 is the value that we're using. I'm going to say right answers in rectangular. Questions take a little bit of endurance to get through. Answers in rectangular. Let's go through this the same way we did before. So first thing I need to do is convert this into polar form. So I have 125. So that's really like saying I have 125 and then 0i. All right. That's rectangular. So I'm like here, which is great. That's easy to work with. So that's 0 degrees. So your theta or your argument, because remember, it's called the same thing, is 0. And then we're going to add 360 to it to get everything else we need here. So we're going to also use, and we got to do it twice this time. So 0 plus 360. I'm, getting, I'm just showing that in case you want it. So we're going to use theta equals 360. And we're also going to use 720. Okay, so we're going to use zero, we're going to use 360, and we're going to use 720. Next thing you need to find is your R value. So square root of 125 squared plus zero squared. No, you don't have to show this. So R is equal to 125. Okay. Next thing I do is I write this in polar form. And I do it three times. So into polar. So we want to go here, 125. And then cos plus i sine of 0. And I want to do all the cube roots this time. Okay, so just like that. So this section right here, I'll say that this is going to be our work for the first cube root. So this is your first cube root. You're immediately going to take this and rewrite it. And then you're going to apply your theorem. So this is equivalent to 125 cos plus i sine of 0 to the 1 -third. And then you use your theorem. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to go 125 raised to the one third cos plus i sine of zero times one third. It means I'm looking at five cos plus i sine of zero. That's polar, it means I'm not done. So now you're going to convert this to rectangular. So to convert this to rectangular, we're going to do r cos theta, r sine theta. So 5 cos 0, and then 5 sine 0. And actually, these are faster, because these are just unit circles. So what's a cosine of 0? 1 and sine of 0 is? 
zero. So you have some flexibility in how you want to write this answer. If you want, you can write it five plus zero I or just five. Or just plain five. All right, so there's my first answer. Now I'm going to take this further. I'm going to flip this and we need to do the other angles as well. So the next thing I need to change is my second cube root is going to be 360. My third cube root is going to be 720. And even if you had to do a fourth root, if you can get fast at this, you don't have to show every single little part of this work. So I need to remember 360 now. All right, so we are at the second cube root part. I'm going to go second cube root. So I'm going to have the cube root of 125, and my argument changes to 360 instead. So 360 instead, and again, I like to use degrees because I think it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to take it and rewrite it and begin. So this gets rewritten as 125, and then cos plus i sine of 360 raised up to the one third power. And again, you're in polar, you're gonna use your theorem, distribute that one third. So I have 125 raised to the one third. I have cos plus I sine of 360 times one third. So keep going with this. Again, 125 to the one third is just five. And then this one is cos plus I sine of 120. So now you don't have unit circle anymore. Sorry, so this one's longer again, but it's good practice. So 120 degrees is gonna be a second quadrant angle. So I go 180 minus 120. 60 ASTC, and we're getting there. So I'm going to go 5 cosine of, I'm sorry, negative cosine of 60. And then I'm going to go 5 sine 60. All right, guys, cosine of 60. Yep. And hopefully, again, the more you work with those, the easier they get. So this answer is negative 5 over 2. And then sine of 60. Yep, very good. Square root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to go plus 5 square root of 3 over 2 i. So this is your second answer. Now i got to do it one more time. And then you're done. But if you can do it one time, I think you can do it, you know, two, three, four times if you needed to. It's not really any harder. You're just working with different angles. So lastly, my third cube root. So I'm going to do the cube root of 125 cos plus i sine. And this one is 720. So 720 instead, you're going to change it. So I'm going to have 125 cos plus I sine of 720 to the one third power. Apply your theorem moving forward. So I have 125 raised to the one third cos plus I sine of 720 times a third at 240. Thank you. So five cos plus I sine of 240. And then same exact thing as the left side. All right, so getting to the end here. So I'm going to go five and then cosine and then 240 instead. Means now I'm here. So ASTC, 
means these are both now negative angles. So I'm gonna go negative cosine of 60, very, very similar. So this is my X value and then my Y value would be five and then negative sine of 60. All right, you're gonna plug them in. And yes, they're the same as the left side. Very, very similar. Just be careful all these little negatives. So this one I have uh, the five times the negative one half, five times the negative radical three over two. So I have negative five over two minus five radical three all over two and then I, okay? So your final answers are the three that got circled. So the two from this page and the one from the page um, prior to this. What do you guys think? They're pretty doable, right? They're just long. Okay, so that is it as far as content goes for chapter nine. So as promised, the rest of the time is yours. You've got a review to do. You've got some of these problems to do, and then your test is due by next Tuesday night. Okay, but well, please make good use of your time. Next week, we're gonna move forward into your conics.